Just underneath your feathers and Paragon Personal Finance Limited. Well, the assumption will explain the judgment of the court. Uh, this appeal is about payment protection insurance, a controversial financial product which was sold to people borrowing money from banks and other financial institutions. It covered the repayment of specified borrowings upon the occurrence of an insured event, which was generally sickness, accident or unemployment. It was usually sold as part of a package which the, with the loan itself. The terms usually provided for a single premium to be paid up front and added to the amount borrowed. PPI was strongly criticised because the premium was high and much of it went on commissions to intermediaries such as the lender himself and any broker or financial advisor involved. Aggregate commissions typically amounted to between 50 and 80 percent of gross premium and while the fact that commissions were being paid was commonly disclosed to the borrower, their amount hardly ever was. The Consumer Credit Act 1974 provides for an elaborate code of rules for the protection of consumers seeking credit from financial institutions. Some of these rules are contained in the Act itself. Some of them are contained in regulations made under statutory powers by the Financial Services and Markets Authority. One of the rules which is in the Act itself is section 140A, which confers on the court the power to reopen credit transactions if it decides that because of something done or not done by or on behalf of the creditor, the relationship was unfair to the debtor. In addition, the Financial Services and Markets Authority has made detailed regulations governing the conduct of insurance intermediaries called the Insurance Conduct of Business Rules. Mrs. Plavin responded to a circular put through her letterbox by an independent credit broker called LLP, offering to arrange the refinancing of her existing debts through a new loan secured on her home. LLP acted for potential borrowers, but it had arrangements in place with a number of financial institutions to introduce <coughs> borrower clients, and each of the potential lenders had arrangements with one or more insurers to provide PPI policies if the client decided to buy one. Mrs. Plavin contacted LLP, and in due course they arranged for her to borrow £34,000 from a company called Paragon Personal Finance and to buy a PPI policy for five years from Norwich Union at a cost of nearly £6,000. This was paid up front in the usual way and added to the loan, making a total loan of nearly £40,000. She began an action against, among others, Paragon, claiming relief under Section 140A. Leaving aside points which have fallen by the wayside in the course of the litigation, she had two essential complaints. One was that although she was told that commissions would be payable out of the premium, she was not told how large they were. They were, in fact, 71.8% of gross premium shared between LLP and Paragon. Mrs. Plavin's second complaint was that no one had given her any advice about whether PPI was suitable for her needs. It was, in fact, she said, quite unsuitable. She was a 59-year-old widow with no dependents, approaching retirement, with a secure job carrying generous sickness and retirement benefits, and she already had life insurance. Moreover, the PPI policy covered only half the period of the loan. Mrs. Plavin said that these two failings were things that Paragon had failed to do. So far as the default was down to the broker LLP, she said that LLP had been acting on behalf of Paragon. I will take these two points in turn. On the question of non-disclosure of the commissions, Mrs. Plavin failed before both the judge uh, and the Court of Appeal. She failed because of an earlier decision of the Court of Appeal in 2012 in Harrison and Black Horse Limited. Now, that case had decided that a relationship between a borrower and a lender could not be unfair uh, under Section 140A if the lender had acted in accordance with the conduct of business rules issued by the Financial Services and Markets Authority. The conduct of business rules deal with the disclosure of commissions but only required them to be disclosed if the insured was a commercial customer and then only if the customer asked. It does not require disclosure to consumers such as Mrs. Plavin. Paragon had not broken any of the disclosure rules, therefore the Court of Appeal in this case felt bound by Harrison's case to reject this part of Mrs. Plavin's case. The Supreme Court considers that Harrison and Black Horse Limited was wrong and should now be overruled. 
The function of the conduct of business rules is quite different from that of section 140A, and the mere fact that a lender has complied with them cannot mean that his relationship with the borrower is necessarily fair. The conduct of business rules impose duties on insurance intermediaries, breach of which gives rise to a claim for damages. Section 140A, by comparison, imposes no duties. It confers powers on the court in cases where the relationship is found to be unfair. These are different issues. The relationship may be unfair for a variety of reasons which do not involve any breach of duty. Likewise, a breach of duty may occur even in the context of a relationship which is fair. Moreover, a much wider range of factors may be relevant to the question of fairness, including the characteristics of the particular borrower and the information available to her. In this court's opinion, a significant inequality of information between lender and borrower is capable of making their relationship unfair. It is liable to limit the borrower's practical ability to make an informed choice. Mrs. Plavin must be taken to have known that some commissions would be payable, the documentation she received told her so, uh, but she had no reason to know that the commissions consumed such a large proportion of the premium. Her evidence was that if she had known, she would have questioned this. It seems likely that if she had shopped around for something cheaper, she would not have found it. But that is not the point. The point is uh, that she did not have to take PPI at all. Any reasonable person in her position if told that less than a third of the price of a service was going to the actual provider of that service, would be likely to question whether it represented value for money. Since Paragon was the only party which knew the size of all the commissions, they could and should have disclosed them. Turning to the lack of advice which Mrs. Plavin received, the problem here is that it was LLP, not Paragon, who recommended this product to her. They were her brokers, and they were the only intermediary dealing directly with her. It is an essential requirement of the relevant part of section 140A of the Act that the unfairness of the relationship should arise from something done or not done on behalf of Paragon. A claim against LLP, however, is not much use to Mrs. Plavin because they've gone into liquidation. She's received a payment in settlement from the compensation fund, but it is less than the amount claimed. In these circumstances, the Court of Appeal held that although, strictly speaking, LLP might be acting for Mrs. Plavin, in some larger sense they were acting for Paragon. Paragon would therefore have to carry the can for LLP's defaults. The Supreme Court rejects this view. When the Act requires that the relevant default should have been committed by or on behalf of the creditor, it means that it must be committed either by the creditor or by someone who is the creditor's agent or for whom the creditor is answerable in law, either under the Act itself or otherwise. LLP ought to have given Mrs. Plavin advice about the suitability of the product for her. That was a function which they should have performed in her interests as her brokers. It was not a function that they were in any sense performing for Paragon. The Court of Appeal held in favour of Mrs. Plavin on the advice point um, uh, uh, and against her on the disclosure point. The Supreme Court upholds the, the order in her favour, but on the opposite grounds. The relationship with Paragon was unfair because of the non-disclosure of the commissions. It was not unfair because of the absence of proper advice from LLP. The case will now have to return to the Manchester County Court to decide what relief is appropriate. <laughs>